Ladies and gentlemen, the American Jury and Bulldog Nation, I know how many of you feel about the NFL. I feel the same way. Their NFL ratings and television are crashing. There's nobody in attendance. They've really been hurt. There was a recent article last week that they're having to make it right with a lot of advertisers based upon their ratings. In other words, the advertisers were expecting better ratings, so they got to refund some of the money. I also supported all of you who were offended by the kneeling during the national anthem and all the other crazy business. However, as I've admitted to many of you, I am a Dallas Cowboy fan and I'm a Cincinnati Bengals fan. And you know what? We do a lot of things for our grandchildren. So when I found out that the Dallas Cowboys were coming to Cincinnati to play a football game, I went and purchased 11 tickets for everybody in my family to go to. Actually, it was 14. So everybody in my immediate family could go, including the Angels, who are Dallas fans. We bought them through StubHub. And I don't go to many games. So when I go, I want really good tickets. You're not going to believe this. The NFL, the Cincinnati Bengals, canceled all those tickets that I bought with the COVID baloney. And then, you know what StubHub does? Instead of refunding my money, StubHub gives me a credit. So here I'm stuck with a credit with StubHub. So I said to myself, well, if we can still get Bengals tickets for the Dallas game, let's get them. So after a lot of trouble, I secured 11 tickets in four different locations. Five for the Angels together, four, two, and two. My, the other daughter decided they didn't want to go. My son decided not to go. But we put together a group of family and cl a very close friends, Joe and Christina Rudder, to go to the game because they're big Bengals fans. In fact, Carson Rudder, who's a Durrani client, was named after Carson Palmer. So we buy the tickets to StubHub. Now, it used to be that when you bought tickets from StubHub, you could screenshot the code, you could send it to whoever. But no, 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 no. StubHub makes it to where when you go to the game, whoever's got the phone with the tickets on, which I did, I had to be there. So can you imagine trying to corral 11 people coming in four different vehicles, trying to meet at the stadium in one place so you could do it? So we drive down to the stadium, and of course, there's streets parked off, parking, Parking looked bad even though there was hardly anybody there. So we go to a parking garage at the Enquire building, which is right across the street from the stadium. So we pull in there. We walk to this, the game. We get in. I have to sit there. And you're not going to believe this. Thank goodness one of the security people recognizes me and says, Hey, Bulldog, I'm a Facebook friend. Thank goodness. Why? Because this very nice young gentleman had me, as each person arrived, go in, put on my phone, show the StubHub tickets, check them off, and I had to do this like three or four times as people arrived. Of course, I missed the kickoff. Very frustrating. But that's what you had to do. That's what StubHub required. That's what we had to put up with. So then, you can figure, okay, there's not very many people here. You're not going to believe this. You had to wear a mask to get into the stadium. You had to wear a mask while you were sitting there in the stadium. Despite all that social distancing, you had to sit there with a mask. And my security friend told me that if you got warned three times about your mask, you got kicked out. So you had to sit there with a the mask unless you were eating or drinking. It gets even better. We assumed that we could all get near and close to each other once we got in. They actually go through the entire Bengal Stadium and put plastic straps holding the seats in place to where you couldn't sit down on them. And you ready for this? The seats that were sold, they actually put blue tape on them so they were identified as seats that were sold. And there was apparently like 10,000 people there. I mean, it's a, I mean, the control, I mean, you felt like you were in a, this controlled environment that was like weird, weird. 
Then as we were sitting there, we were thinking about how much money the Hamilton County taxpayer had to pay for this stadium. You would think that the Brown family could pay for a power washer or two. It, it is clear to me that all the concrete in this place may have never been washed ever, or at least for some time. It was unbelievable. And I'm sitting in the stadium thinking to myself, they think this stadium needs upgrades. They think this stadium is old. Whatever happened when you built a stadium and it lasted 100 freaking years? There's nothing wrong with that damn stadium. Another thought that I had sitting there was, I cannot believe that the stadium wasn't an enclosed retractable roof stadium like Lucas Field in Indianapolis. How stupid that was. And then as you know, old Bob Bettinghouse did a deal with the Bengals that was the worst stadium deal for taxpayers in the country as reported by the Wall Street Journal many years back. So then after the game we leave and you go to the parking garage, $25. It's one of those places where you have to have your ticket, which I left in the car. You gotta go to the pay station, pay for your damn ticket, and they actually have a sign, you got 15 minutes to leave. Like, oh, so if I pay and I hang out for 20 minutes in your parking garage, I gotta pay again? I mean, they make the whole going to a game experience from, the, from beginning to end, from buying your tickets to going to the game to going downtown, hell. As we drove home, I told my wife, I said, isn't it awesome that we live out in the country? She said, absolutely correct. Now, the only saving grace of this game yesterday, of course, and this is why we do it, a little divine providence, is the angels happen to be sitting over the entranceway, the visitors walking in and out. And little Rhett actually had dressed up like Zeke, his biggest fan, and on his Christmas list, on his Christmas list was Zeke Cleats. So after the game, when Zeke Elliott was walking back to the tunnel, and Charlie and my daughter had Rhett on her shoulders, Zeke spotted him, and you can't make this up, actually took off and threw him his cleats. You believe that? Rhett got Zeke's cleats. <laughs> I mean, it's on his Christmas list. Santa. I mean, that, that is uh, unbelievable. Now, that was an incredible experience that we had. But, of course, that's very subjective. That doesn't change how everybody had to deal with the parking and everything else. And, by the way, let me tell you something else was fun. Mary and I sat with Christina and Joe Rudder, who are Bengal fans, Cowboy fans, getting along and you know what everybody, the whole Bengals fan, there was more Dallas fans than Bengal fans there, but everybody was in such good humor. And you know what the good humor was? These two teams both suck so bad. <laughs> One's worse than the other. It was kind of fun. I mean, that's how bad the Bengals were. Dallas killed them. Another thing that was interesting about this socially distancing that was kind of cool, of an irony, is you didn't have any drunk standing around you. There was plenty of elbow room. But the bottom line is, folks, I just, the parking issues and everything else, I don't know why anybody ever goes downtown Cincinnati to attend or do anything because it's not a pleasant experience. It's a pain in the ass. This is the Bulldog. Every dog has their day. Have a great day.